Welcome to the Two Lane Life Studio. We are here to watch Josh change the oil in his Road King special. You've seen us do it, and you're gonna see him do it. Why do we do it? Well, when we put the miles down and we ride all year long, we have to maintain these bikes. And, and we're also gonna talk about winterizing the bikes. Uh, and for us, showing how to tune these bikes up when you're riding during the winter, because some people do ride in inclement weather, whether it's rain, snow, sunshine, and some people put them away and leave them in the garage for three months. Right, so let's talk about that. Perfect. So I'm Josh, I'm the man that's usually behind the camera and today we're swapping places. Um, this is my 2021 Road King Special and today we're gonna show you how to change the oil. So we have plenty of other videos out there on detailed step-by-step -step oil changes, but today we're just gonna do it quick and choppy, nice and easy, and tell you the essential information you need to change your oil on a newer touring model. So the tools you need to do this oil change, you'll need a socket wrench depending on the oil filter you're going to be using, a 3 8 Allen key for the transmission, a ratchet, and then you'll need a T27 Torx if you have stock screws on your derby cover. You'll also need a 5 8 socket for your drain plugs. All right, so today we're gonna keep things simple. We're gonna use the Maxima Oils oil change in a box, which comes with everything you need to do a complete three hill oil change on your Milwaukee 8. Um, they make kits for all kinds of other bikes. You can see those at TulaneLife.com as well. You've got motor oil, transmission oil, primary fluid, an oil filter, and O-rings. So let's get into it. Well, today we are doing an oil change on a jiffy stand. So step one, get on the ground. So the engine oil drain plug is the forward facing bolt. We're gonna get our 5 8 ratchet and undo that. We have our oil catch can underneath. You always wanna make sure to run your bike for a little bit beforehand to make sure that oil is warm. So before we started changing the oil, I cleaned the air filter, just sprayed it down with K&N cleaner, and then let it sit for a while, rinsed it out, let it dry out, and throw it back in there. So in order to release some pressure and help the oil flow, you wanna remove the dipstick. Got the GoPro, keep things simple. Um, the engine oil is almost done draining. Now we are on to the transmission, which is right behind it. You can do the rest by hand. Might be a little warm, so just watch out for that. Boom. While those two are draining, the same thing goes for the transmission. You're gonna to wanna to release the pressure in the transmission dipstick using the 3 8 Allen. Lost myself there for a second. So let that go. And if we were under there, we would see that start to flow. So while that draining is finishing up, you always wanna make sure to clean those drain plugs and replace all the O-rings. Before we get to the next steps, we're gonna put these back in the bike. And something really important that you wanna think about is to subscribe to the channel. So up next, we got this 5 8 and we're gonna put, what? I know what the two of you are doing now. What's going on, dude? What are we I, doing? I just figured this out. Two Lane Life is now you and Jay, and I'm the cameraman? Yes, yes, we've done it. Shout out to the camera operator. I am now the talent. Back to it, we're gonna take that 5 8 make sure that your oil drain pan, catch can, whatever you wanna call it, is covering all those holes. So the primary drain plug, is getting loose. I might have over tightened it last time, which you definitely do not want to do. And uh, I'm gonna take this little handy dandy guy, film that for you. There you go, nice and dirty. Usually 3,500 to 4,000 miles on a change. This time around, things got in the way. We went on trips, ended up being like 5K. So definitely in need of an oil change. So when cleaning and inspecting your drain plugs and replacing your O-rings and all that good stuff, there is probably gonna be metal shavings. That's normal. Just make sure to clean that off all the way. My bike has 22,000 miles and it still has some shavings on there, which I'm gonna clean off. If you see bigger chunks of stuff, you should probably call someone, your guy. Make sure you figure out what's going on there. All right, so all the drain plugs are clean, buttoned up. Now we're removing the derby cover. Usually we do about a three beer oil change. So I'm going in for number two. Wanted to keep things quick, but it's all good. Subscribe. You're gonna wanna loosen those up. So the easiest way to do it is to take off the top bolt last. Make sure you put some pressure on the derby cover so it doesn't fall off. Remove that screw and take that sucker off and put it in a clean place. So you're gonna wanna replace the gasket. That's gonna keep the fluids where they belong. First up, we're doing primary since we're on this side already. They do make a funnel to make this a little bit easier, but one of us, one of us threw it away last time. So we're gonna put that in there, keep it simple. Lance is helping me lean the bike over. 
We're just gonna put that at the bottom of the primer and go nice and slow. All right, so we're throwing the derby cover back on. Yes, it's my bike, I can do that. Um, don't forget to tighten these in a star pattern. Not too tight all at once, just go little by little. The manual recommends 84 to 108 inch pounds of torque for the proper specs. And uh, I'm dad tightening them. All right, so pre-loosen the oil filter. Ended up having to use the uh, strap here to get that out because it was getting a little tight in there. We like to use shop rags or paper towels or anything along those lines to kind of put underneath the oil filter to catch any excess oil that's gonna come out. You can use tin foil. I'm pretty sure they make funnels for it, but we just keep it simple stupid with some shop rags. So use a screwdriver to shove a few of those in there. And then once you're done, I have this sucker hand tight. Gonna take it out. There we go. She was toast. So before I took the previous oil filter off, I filled up the new oil filter with about a quarter of a quart of oil. Had some time to soak in there. After that, cleaned all the contact points and excess oil off the case and all that good stuff. And now we're gonna replace the new oil filter. You always wanna make sure to put a light coating of oil around the gasket on the oil filter to ensure a nice tight seal. And then you'll place it in there, get it hand tight, make sure the threads all line up proper. So I usually go hand tight with the filter itself and then get the oil filter wrench and you go about a quarter of a turn. You don't wanna get it too tight because then when it comes time to take it off, it's just not gonna be a good time. So that was about an eighth, another eighth. Boom, she's good to go. ADW90 transmission going in there and that just takes one quart. Um, hair, makeup, oil rag, very good. So got the transmission all buttoned up. You don't wanna go too tight on that either especially being that that stock dipstick, bolt, whatever you wanna call it, is plastic. So up next, we're gonna do about four and a half quarts of the 2050 oil in the engine. And uh, if I didn't mention, with the drain plugs, it's about 14 to 21 foot pounds of torque that is recommended. All right, so I'm on the fifth quart. Like I said, we're only doing four and a half quarts in here. Usually what we'll do is we'll put that half a quart in there run it for a bit, whether it be riding home or just around the block, let it sit for a bit, and then check the dipstick hot on the jiffy stand, make sure it's all good and adjust accordingly. Um, so now that that's all buttoned up, the boys are gonna talk about some maintenance tips to help take care of your bike if you're a winter rider, and then we're gonna talk about winterizing your bike. So we'll see you there. I gotta say that was really fun watching Josh change his oil. I mean, we're usually on the ball there, but he did it and it's good to see him do it because you get to know your bike and that's really important. And I also got to have fun watching Jalen with the camera. I mean, it was kind of a funny show going on here. You guys missed behind the scenes, but I like well, it. Well, I, I really think I'm being pushed out here. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna have a call with the board here at, at five. <laughs> but hey, you know, we, we've always talked about doing our own oil changes because the maintenance uh, tips that we try to we see if things are loose right uh, what do you always tell people to check when you well you check Their the pressure bolts, you check the tire pressure tire most people pressure. don't especially in winter riding you want your tire pressure the proper pressure for what road you're gonna be on it really is kind of important so we're blessed we get to ride all year long uh, there are other people out there that do winter riding as well and so the cold affects the tire pressure. It affects the way the battery charges. So investing in a tender is not a bad idea. Right. We just got back from a trip with Matt Laidlaw and it was raining and you can see Josh's bike is kind of a perfect example of what you need to do when you get home. Not only change the oil, but there's so much grime and mud and dirt. It's good to make sure that everything's kind of working the right way. Everything's got proper lubrication. I got up the other morning, it was 32 degrees, my tire pressure said low. Be careful when you fill it, a lot of guys will fill it and then when you start riding it goes up higher and again and now it has more air than you actually want in it. So check it a couple times. Yeah and my CBOs used to have that and I think I was called an air snob. <laughs> so now you and Josh are air snobs but yeah sometimes that'll happen right. where the sensor is reading it a little bit lower than it really is. I was in Deadwood a couple years back and I went and filled the sucker up. Next thing I know, I've got 50 pounds of right. air pressure. So very important. Same thing with layering up. Make sure that you do that. Maybe heated gear. Uh, if it's wet out there, stay off the paint. Make sure you're following the dry lines if you can. 
uh, reduce your speed a little bit. But yeah, for the maintenance side of it, winter does have an impact on these bikes. So make sure they're well maintained, check those bolts, keep it lubed up, keep that tire pressure up and watch that battery tender as well. That's a good investment, I gotta tell you. So if you're going to put your bike away and put it in the garage, put it on a tender, but before you do that, change your oil, get it all set like you're gonna ride it, go in there, plug it into the tender, put the cover on it, and say, hey, I'll see you in a few months. Well, before we put the cover on it, let's go through some winterizing tips because it's important about all the different fluids and, and so forth. So let's get to that part of it. So up next, we are talking about winterizing your bike tips. We had to go Google these today because we don't know all those tips. So what did you come up with there, buddy? Well, just remember, take notes and have a notebook, log your miles and log what service you did with the date. It'll really help you out. So there's nothing wrong with having notes. I mean, one thing in the winter is freshen your fluids, brake fluid, oil, all the fluids in your bike, get them fresh before you store it. Charging, charge the bike, Another thing, if you can, you're charging it all the time, but if you can, go out there once a week, once a month, and start it up. Let the fluids run through the engine. That's a good thing. Check your tires, even wear, dry cracking. Make sure it's good before you actually bring it out again. So some tips on preventing rust. You wanna make sure you wash and wax and really dry that bike off. Uh, if you're storing it outside, you wanna make sure that some of the little places where the critters can get, that you plug those up so you don't wake up to some nesting in some of your exhaust pipes, as an example. Additionally, where you're storing, it's important. Make sure there's proper ventilation. Uh, and as well, make sure that you have a full tank of gas. That way you're gonna prevent corrosion and rust there. Also, it's a great time to do upgrades. You can go to twolanelife.com and pick up some motorcycle parts there. Local, some of your local Harley dealerships also store bikes and do upgrades during that time period. So it's a great way to take care of your bike during the winter so it's ready to run when the spring falls. Because when the spring comes, I know you're ready to fire this sucker up and get on out of here. So, so let's get out of here. What do they need to do subscribe first? Subscribe to our YouTube channel and tell your friends too. We have blogs, we have information and great videos, and we do have parts. So let's go. Boom. Are we rolling? Yeah, we probably were rolling. We're rolling. Time. Um, hopefully we're actually, let me check. Let me check. Um, hair, makeup, oil rag. Very good. So when you live in a part of that country, let's do it again, I'm too bobbled out over the place because we like to keep them in, in the right left, left, left. Some maintenance tips on maintaining. Some maintenance, some ma cut. If you see big shards, call the cops. I don't know who the asshole uh, who did this oil change last time was, but I think it was me. And it's getting a little tight. Uh, cut. I got, it, got up in the morning the other day and I, it said low pri tire pressure. Boy, we're really fumbling around this. Anyway. So we forgot one tip. What's that? Um, if you're winter riding, you always have to have a saddlebag, some whiskey, because <laughs> that'll keep the rider warm <laughs> and lubed up as well. Boom. <laughs>